Morning YouTube, Warbles on a lot here. Sunday, 22nd of November, just getting ready for the outsiders and I think there should be a first dog on the moon today. Time now for outsiders. I'm Barry Cassidy and you're not. Welcome all uh, your outsiders this morning. Susan Harris-Brimo, she's Associate Professor at the Griffith Law School. Joins us from Brisbane uh, in Melbourne, Nicholas Rees, Principal Fellow at the Melbourne School of Government, University of Melbourne, and in Sydney. We're everywhere today. Helen Andrews, Policy Analyst at the Centre for Independent Studies. Welcome all. Great to be with you. And, and Nicholas, I must commend you to, to begin on your, your facial growth. Thank you, Jonathan. For uh, listeners, they won't uh, know this. This, yet, is, this is not a radio gag, really, is it? It's a bit of a sight one. I'm uh, sporting a moustache this morning for Movember. It's not a pretty sight, but uh, raising money for men's health. Um, Movember started in Australia, now very much a global phenomenon. You've been a man of the mo for a while. I was one of the original <laughs> mo bros, actually. Uh, started on Brunswick Street in Melbourne. We've had over 5 million people participate. Uh, raises money for prostate cancer, testicular cancer, and men's mental health programs. There we go. If you know a Mobro, get out there and support them. A bit too late to start growing now, but you can applaud someone who is. <laughs> Thank you, Nicholas. That it's been an extraordinary week. We've had, of course, the events that that occupied our minds last week uh, from Paris, and and subsequently we've had a lot of conversation uh, here and elsewhere on well, I. I in a lot of ways, what to do next? I, I'm wondering, Helen, uh, as you watch Malcolm Turnbull um, making his way through various overseas meetings, it, it, a great opportunity for him to let us into sort of his thinking uh, around security, around terror. What have you made of, of his contribution? Uh, I think that Malcolm Turnbull's uh, steps this week have been intended to signal his intention to stand with Barack Obama and bolster uh, the alliance with the United States in terms of fighting terrorism, and I think that that can only yield good dividends. It's been, I, I've had an interesting thought experiment this this week, Nicholas, to imagine the response post-Paris post under the former administration with uh, with Tony Abbott as Prime Minister. It's It's been extraordinarily separate from what we might have heard. I mean, we've heard from Tony Abbott this week too about boots on the ground in Syria. I think we could have had a very different week politically had that change not been uh, not been made. Yes, look, I think there's been a change in tone and, and substance. I mean, certainly uh, in tone, uh, you know, the new Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull uh, has not been out there trying to escalate uh, fear. Uh, he's, I think, been giving a more realistic appraisal of the situation. But also, uh, I understand from reading reports about you know, the summitry that's been going on under this way that he's also uh, prosecuting a much more nuanced position to his predecessor. So there's talk of a possible uh, political compact, if you like, in Syria involving um, the Assad regime and uh, some of the, albeit extreme Sunni groups. Mm. Uh, now that sort of level of detail was uh, never there under Abbott. It was all about goodies and baddies and witches brews and, uh, you know, it's happening at a much higher level, shall I say. I was capable of complexity. It was even about baddies and baddies, and that's a, that's a very awkward concept to get your head around. And, and Susan, I mean, the, the solutions are, are elusive. I mean, it, it's interesting to hear what, what the Turnbull and, and Obama have been coming up with, and yet to still the call from uh, harder line conservatives for, you know, let, let's act now without often specifying what that might be. But it, it's an awkward conversation. Talk about a diplomatic baptism of fire, huh? I mm. mean, this this was meant to be comfort zone for Malcolm. It was meant to be economic summitry where he's very comfortable. He's well advised. He was ready for, to talk trade and, um, you know, free trade agreements with Europe and, and India. And he was poised to welcome the ASEAN economic zone and he was poised to do all these things. Yes. He would have thought Paris would have been all about the climate agreement talks. Um, and then, bam, put him straight into difficult security territory. But I, I think he's played it well. I think he's he's well advised and he's obviously taking the advice. And it is complicated. It's incredibly complex, uh, the negotiations about Syria, because it's not just what to do about Daesh. It's about what to do about Assad. It's about 
what to do with the whole Middle Eastern region. And at the same time, our core interests really are here in Asia and some very difficult discussions going on about the South China Sea at the East Asia Forum, which mm. might be more important to us than anything else. Indeed, yes. And, and, and in that overlay of extraordinary complexity, the media has continued to well, make various cases. Of one of the extraordinary things in this past week was uh, in Channel 10's The Project and former RM presenter Waleed Ali works there. Uh, he had a bit to say and it was a, a piece of video which which went well, went around the world in, in quick order, 100 million or so views of this particular piece of work on YouTube and other places. We all need to come together. I know how that sounds. I know it's a cliche, but it's also true because it's exactly what ISIL doesn't want. So if you're a member of parliament or a has been member of parliament preaching hate at a time when what we actually need is more love, you're helping ISIL. They have told us that. If you're a Muslim leader telling your community they have no place here or a non-Muslim basically saying the same thing, you're helping ISIL. They have told us that. Or if you're just someone with a Facebook or Twitter account firing off misguided missives of hate, you're helping ISIL. They've told us that. Holly Dali on the project there on RN's minefield uh, still, of course. Now, there were contrasting messages in the media. This was something quite extraordinary on the BBC uh, from Andrew Neil. The week in which a bunch of loser jihadists slaughtered 132 <coughs> innocents in Paris to prove the future belongs to them, rather than a civilization like France. Well, I can't say I fancy their chances. France, the country of Descartes, Boulet, Monet, Sartre, Rousseau, cutting edge science, world class medicine, fearsome security forces, nuclear power, Coco Chanel, Chateau Lafitte, Coco Van, Daft Punk, Zizou Zidane, Juliette Binoche, liberty, egality, fraternity. Rainbow and Warrior! Tranquility. Versus <laughs> what? Beheadings crucifixions, amputations, slavery, mass murder, medieval squalor, a death cult barbarity that would shame the Middle Ages. Well, IS or Daesh or ISIS or ISIL or whatever name you're going by, I'm sticking with IS as in Islamist scumbags. I think the outcome is pretty clear to everybody but you. Whatever atrocities you're currently capable of committing, you will lose. Something of a contrast in style there, Helen Andrews, and it kind of points to the role that the media has to play in either fanning this or, or keeping a lid on it. Uh, yes, and I certainly side with Andrew Neil, if for no other reason than what his accent does to some of those lovely French consonants. <laughs> um, but of course, in the case of Walid Ali, there was nothing in the text of his editorial that was at all objectionable. I mean, mm. How could there be? It's a plea for togetherness. But nevertheless, I thought it represented an attempt to shift the focus and even the, some of the blame onto the West for insufficient multiculturalism, rather than lodging it with the Islamist terrorists where it belongs. And I think that that has a potential to be worse even than a distraction, but to be counterproductive. We have because, to, oh, um, go ahead. sorry, Helen, but uh, Nicholas, we, we have to look this thing in the face, do we not, and call it for what it is. And it, it has a, a religious fundamental and yet it doesn't speak for all of that religion. It, it is uh, an act of, of war of a sort, and yet is it an act of war that we should respond to in kind? These are really difficult things to grapple with, and, and often the, the media strips this of nuance. They, they do, and um, the truth is that the co there's a very complex truth here that there is no simple solution. Uh, I've got to say, I've, I've listened to both of those um, addresses, and uh, I, uh, uh, there was parts of both of them that appealed to me. I mean, there is no doubt that you know one of the reasons a lot of the, well, the last week's atrocity occurred in Paris is because of um, difficulties that are faced in the northern suburbs of Paris, where, where there are uh, a large group of um, uh, Muslims living from Africa and the Middle East um, who have not been uh, as well embraced in France uh, as you would hope in a multicultural society. So that, and you know, they call that part of Paris Chicago, uh, the reference to the mean streets of Chicago. In fact, the, 
those streets are probably meaner than the streets of mm. Chicago these days. So there is, that was something <laughs> of what was happening last weekend. That said, I also um, acknowledge and accept the line of the gentleman from the BBC. I mean, ISIL is not something that can be contained. It must be destroyed. And at some point that's going to require uh, not um, a soft force or soft power, but hard power. Uh, and so uh, how that finally manifests itself, I think is still not clear, but it's going to have to happen. Yes, we're not really, I mean, it, it's another convention, Susan, of, of the media to to put an answer, you know, to make everything sound solvable. And when you have something like this, which is a, a very much a wrestle with smoke, that 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 particular media requirement is, well, worse than elusive. It's almost impossible to meet that. I think it's dangerous. I don't like civilizational tropes like this. I don't think they're helpful at all. And I do think they, they just make IS sound more important than they are. Um, I, I'm, I'm with Adam Hills on this one. I say we mock, we mock. <laughs> and we just give the public as much factual and contextual information as we possibly can. Mm. The situation in Syria is complicated. You can't pretend that it's not. You can't pretend that IS is the only issue going on there the only thing killing civilians. Um, and it's o not only when the issues in countries affect us that we should pay attention. So we should have been paying attention to what the Taliban was doing in Afghanistan before 2001. And it was a similar issue with Daesh. But I, I don't really think the, uh, I, don't, I re don't really think the commentator philosophy is helping us particularly. The, the man with the boy with the flowers, that was better. Definitely, um, you know, trying to help people ex work through their emotions. But then I think, you know, a bit of investigative journalism, a bit of facts and figures and maps might help people a little bit. Maps is tricky. Helen Andrews, was, it's been interesting watching, watching Malcolm Turnbull, as we've been saying overseas and the tone that he's been striking. And it's uh, perhaps it's the distance from this country, but he's, he's let himself uh, be put at, at somewhat at a distance from uh, the harder conservative voices within his own party. How do you think that might manifest as he goes into his next uh, international foray? That's back to Paris with the, the climate talks. Will he be, do you think, emboldened um, by, by his, his new sort of centrism? Will, will that extend into climate policy, do you think? Uh, well, I've certainly been very impressed by the way that Malcolm Turnbull has stared down Tony Abbott on the question of boots on the ground in the Middle East, because it's all very well to talk about uh, destroying ISIS. But the fact that they control territory in the Middle East is not what made the difference in terms of their ability to pull off a terrorist attack in Paris. Mm. ISIS could, uh, all, all of their territory, it could cease to exist as a territorial entity tomorrow. And that still wouldn't change the fact that there's a suburb of Brussels that's the jihad capital of Europe. Um, so I think that Malcolm Turnbull doesn't stare down Tony Abbott just for the sake of staring him down or for scoring points against his predecessor. I think he does it when he's right and because he's right. We're and not, welcome to him. Uh, we're not, Nicholas, talking about putting boots on the ground in, in Belgium. That's uh, not quite on the agenda yet. Uh, no, but there is an interesting uh, debate going on uh, along this theme, and it's, it's whether um, ISIL, we're in a fight with ISIL in the, similar to, say, the one that went on against communism or whether it's mm. more we're fighting criminals here. Uh, and, and look, it's an interesting debate. I, I think we're probably more towards the criminal end of the spectrum, but uh, but, but it's bigger than that, of course. I, I wonder, Susan, just on a final point, if at this stage of our war on terror, which is you know better than a decade in, we're now starting to get a bit of a handle on this, perhaps. We, we're realising that it's not a simple matter, which is perhaps an important revelation. I think so. I think that... And also easy points can't be scored out of it because, uh, you know, uh, the lone wolf factor and a, a range of, you know, look at everyone says, oh, they're a medieval death cult. Well, they're very sophisticated at using mm. the internet, for example. Um, so I, I do think that uh, leaders are <coughs> learning over time uh, and they're learning that, you know, our populations are not immune to things that are happening a long way away. And so we have to be more calibrated in the way we speak and that words mean things. Words are used uh, in particular ways by, let's hope that, against uh, us. Let's yeah. hope that conversation can continue in a sensible way. Susan Harris, Rimmer, uh, Associate Professor at Griffith Law School. In Britain. Okay, first Moondog's about to start.